What is up, everybody? Thank you guys for tuning in again to this next episode of my Bomber series. And here we have the B-24D Liberator. Uh, this is one of my favorite kits, one of my favorite airplanes of all World War II history, maybe of all time. I just think this airplane is super cool, super just doggy looking, and uh, yeah, just awesome. Um, it was really hard to get my hands on these kits. It took a while to save up and buy them and found them on eBay. And this is just one of my prized possessions, number one prized possession in my model cave. So let's get into it. There's the instructions, classic Revel um, instructions and the decal sheets were pretty legit for being a vintage kit. Um, not any complaints from me none of them failed and they weren't yellowed too bad so it was in good condition especially for a kit that actually wasn't sealed so from the factory it wasn't sealed so but yeah a great kit love it these decals were decently thin um and not too thick to put on the model and i really blend them in to make it look like it was painted so they were a good selection of decals So whoever sold me this kit on eBay uh, did a really good job of keeping this kit in really good condition. So shout out to them. I don't remember who they were as I bought the kit like two years ago, but um, it's just really important to us as modelers. If you are an eBay person out there and you do try your best, we just give you a special shout out because I actually have not had a problem with any models that have come to my doorstep, whether it was missing pieces or a missing decal sheet or even just the box was screwed up i have not run into that problem so um if you guys have i'm sorry that that happened to you but um in my case i actually haven't had that happen to me so just a special shout out and thanks to the ebayers out there and um people who take care of these old vintage kits So this is just one box. I'm actually building two B-24s and um, I just wanna make sure that you guys know that there's a lot of details and things that I put into this video and it is longer, but I think you're gonna learn a lot from this because this is a special kit. So I wanted to make it a little bit longer of a video and also I used a lot of techniques on this kit. So just stay tuned and learn as much as you can and hopefully there's something of value in for you. And I know building this kit was like just crazy for me um and i learned so much from weathering airbrushing um just different text techniques and and things like that so just stay tuned and watch through the video till the end because these just are so cherry and if you want to skip to the end it's the last six minutes of the video where you can see the pictures so just letting you know, you can skip forward through this part. I just took a little extra time to show you these parts and the details that this kit involves because this kit actually is pretty detailed for a Revel kit. Um, there isn't receipted panel lines, but you know, that's just a Revel. So you just kind of expect that. But the interior details were really, really good at better than I could have ever expected. So here are some classic raised panel lines from Rebel. And uh, and like I said, the details were really good in this kit and it came out really good. Uh, just It just took a little bit of effort, which obviously from being a modeler, you can kind of, you can kind of appreciate some effort. So um, if you did want to get this kit, it is a good kit to have. Uh, it's nostalgic. I'm wondering if you can even find these kits anymore. They're, they were pretty rare when I bought them and now it's been like four years. So I don't know how rare they are anymore, but, um, you know, if you did want to get this kit, wanted to get into it, there's a lot of pieces, parts, a lot of different things that, that need to happen in order for this kit to actually work out. And I probably spent a long time. I, I think I spent a month on this. So it is a very intense kit to build. As you can see there, that's just one part of uh, the landing gear and the interior details and 
they're just really good better than what i would have imagined for this kit and the time that it came out So this came with a bunch of bombs that you could put in the model and uh, that's a really cool feature. I did not build bombs, that's just not, I don't have time for it. But I do want to do a, a video series on making like a hundred bombs or whatever because I literally have never built a bomb. I've only built one drop fuselage for a P40, it's my first build, and uh, I just haven't done it yet. So I wanted to do a video, a separate video series on building like a million different bombs. I think that would be fun and it'd be intriguing and I think you guys might enjoy it. So this kit comes with a little tank thing and I'm pretty sure it's a tow tank, like it tows it around, but I'm not too sure. I actually didn't build it. I'm waiting for a sub-series for me to produce and actually build a like a little tank series. So I'll build it in that series and that'll be cool enough. But the wheels are pretty legit. They're basic rebel wheels not the best propellers i've ever seen but you can definitely sand some areas and make it look a little bit better Now this kit features the open bomb bay doors, which is what I opted to do because the bomb bay doors don't actually fit that well on the model itself. But it still looks way better with the bomb bay doors open because I put some aluminum on there, so they look sweet. And as you can see, there are some recessed panel lines, but most of them are those um, raised panel lines. So just be aware of that in your kit and uh, appreciate it and do the things that you need to do in order to make it look good. So here's the interior of the B24, and as you can see, the interior details are pretty good. Um, they're not the best, obviously. They're kind of flattened on the inside, that kind of looks like. Um, but, I mean, what do you expect? You can't see in there anyways, and, uh, you know, but I do a really good job of making this kit look realistic, and you'll see that in... Um, in a little bit of how I go about doing those things in order to make this kit look really, really true and realistic and make those little minor details pop. So there is the horizontal stabilizer, which actually look really good. You can tell that they put some detail into those as well. You can see all the lines and also you can see the hinges too. Um, but the engines were pretty decent as well. Um, pretty much your typical your typical rebel engine and there's some more interior panels that go together and those are pretty well detailed too so those are the bomb bay doors um like i said before if you're going to do bomb doors closed it's not a good idea because they do not fit so just Accept the model as it is, put it on the outside of the model, and um, and you'll be really happy with, with the results, especially if you do it gray, and, and you'll see how my mine turns out and how good it actually looks with the bomb bay doors open. Um, I didn't actually put any bombs in it, so whatever. Uh, here's some figures, and, um, and they were really decent figures too. I've actually never painted a figure. I, I gotta do it, I guess, at some point, but I've never painted a figure, and I don't plan to in the future, but maybe someday.
So here are the clear parts and none of them were yellowed or anything like that or scratched or dinged or dented. They all were really well and they're made in a seam where you do have to do some sanding and stuff. But it's really, if you didn't, I think you'd get away with it. If you didn't have to do this part on some of the clear parts that needed to be put together, I think you could get away with it. But uh, but yeah, all the clear clear parts are in pretty good condition and they're pretty clear. So yeah. There are some areas on this model where you could go ahead and glue these together, sand them out, and make sure those seams are proper. But I mean, it's really not necessary. I didn't do it on my kit and I can barely tell. So um, I wouldn't do it I, on some of these parts. And also um, all the parts were pretty clear and in good condition. So you should be good to go on the clear parts. The instruction kit is your classic Rebel instruction kit. Um, colors are really easy to understand. Uh, there's a whole bunch of parts on this interior though, and there's a lot going on in here. Um, but, I mean, the detail is great, and the more the better, because it came out really good, as you're gonna find out soon enough. Also, pay close attention to the paint scheme on these instructions as they're not perfectly accurate. But these actually did do a pretty good job, especially when they told you actually to separate the Bombay doors as a aluminum color and also an olive drab color on either end too. So just pay close attention to that um, as the inside is supposed to be chromate green. Uh, and I got this idea from Kermit Wheat's um, B24 as... Uh, I tried to mimic his as best as possible. So here is the decal placement instructions and they are pretty sweet. One of them has a little bit of camo going on and Fighting Sam is your typical um, typical B24, just green and gray, but uh, still super sweet in the end. And let's get into the build, everyone. So it starts off with you putting the seats into one of the fuselage floors here. Um, the seat detail is pretty good. And also, um, just the floor detail is pretty good too. So these are the bomb bomb holders. Gosh, I don't even know what they're called. I should look it up. Uh, but they basically go on the interior of the B24 and they are barely shown. But since the bomb bay doors are open, you can actually kind of see them inside there. So um, they're a good additive to put in. We have here all the pieces, parts put together on the interior of this big bad boy. And there is two of the things and some magic happens. Uh, this is a custom mix chromate cream I made myself because I actually, surprisingly enough, I have a million olive drabs but do not have interior chromate green. So um, it's a custom mix and I've done this a few different times where I just put some yellow in with some olive drab and it comes out the way it comes out. Here are some colors I'm going to paint the interior of this beast. And basically I pick different colors to color different boxes, different square outlines of things that need to be painted black. Uh, different things that need to be painted gray and I just go box by box and then I go in with my whites reds and different colors on the other things and I also use brown as well on different pads uh, the things that I would see in the interior of the B17 being brown and then what I do is do this with a really really ragged brush um, almost one that's like dried up and just nasty just the worst brush that you find in your bench I go ahead and put some silver on it and ooh, Put it on a paper towel and wipe it off a bunch. Just wipe it off as much as possible. 
And then what you want to do is just accent all those corners and different areas with this silver technique. And it brings out and accents all of these little areas that you really want to be accented in your in your lines. And you just basically ruffle up anywhere where a pilot would have been a lot and until I mean until you really want to. If you want it to look brand new, fresh, uh, you can skip this step. But um, if you wanted to have that extra little pop, then I would definitely suggest um, weathering your model like this. I wanted these particular models to be pretty beaten up. So I went ahead and did some little extra um, on these particular areas. So here is an area where it's just really not detailed literally whatsoever. So doing this step was absolutely necessary to give it that extra pop and make it look just that much a little bit better. I use clear glue to install all the windows so that they don't fog up and the clear glue that I have is crystal clear um, glue and it works pretty well. And then I just wet uh, the tip of um, a cotton tip and wipe off the excess. It usually ends up filling in the gaps as well when I use this stuff. So it's a good product to have and it dries perfectly crystal clear, it doesn't fog at all and seals in those gaps well. So once you have all your windows in and all of your stuff painted, weathered, and silvered, this is the final look. And like I said, I mean, it just looks like a masterpiece if you do all these steps. I'm using this hobby glue from, actually it's from Hobby Lobby. Um, and this is a really good glue for being elastic and it really does seal in that plastic and really kind of melt it together. But uh, the thing I like about it most is you have a little bit more time um, with this glue other than with Tamiya um, dry cement so or thin cement. So I definitely recommend this glue if you have more, like if you have more areas to, to glue but it's, it's definitely not necessary. You can use your Tamiya glue, which is I'm using here, just like you would on any other model. Um, but you do wanna make sure that you dry fit this model really well, as there are a lot of, um, a lot of things to sand, to cut, to make sure that this thing goes together perfectly. Once you do, 
glue your seams and tape it together and wait for that stuff to cure up good um, just so you can get a good sander on it and make sure all those seams are sealed perfectly. Don't be shy when you're using thin cement. You want enough to really seal in and melt that plastic together. It just ensures that you're actually molding the pieces together. And this is some PRU blue I used for the front of the motors. I just feel like it gives it that next nice extra little color pop um, for the motors. And um, I just like the PRU blue look, even though technically they're kind of supposed to be gray, uh, but they do have a bluish tint to them in some pictures I've seen. So I tend to stick to this. Um, I think one of the models I did gray. Yep. Yep, one of the models I did gray and one of them I did blue just so they were a little bit different. And actually I think I added a, a drop of PRU blue to this gray color um, to make it a little bit different because um, they weren't in the same fighter group and they're completely two different B24s. So I wanted them unique in their own way. So I just stuck some sticky tack to the back of these and put a half of a um, toothpick on the back of them just so I could stick them in my hand and spin them around perfectly. And that seemed to work pretty good. Now I'm going in with my black wash. I'm pretty sure I just use a water-based paint and some water to thin it out and, um, and then brushed it on the whole model and let it dry. But either way, you could use your Tamiya thin um, wash uh, that's oil-based or any other type of wash that you'd like to do for your motors. And they look a little bit heavier than what they actually are when they're wet. So when they dry, they actually dry down to a nicer, um, kind of dirtier look, but not too much like it looked like there. Putting the wings together was pretty legit. Uh, they really were in good condition. They were a little bit warped, but that's kind of to be expected with a 20 year old kit. So um, definitely exactly what I was expecting when dealing with this stuff, but the more tape, the more glue, uh, it ends up working out and it sticks together really well. So yeah, just be mindful and stick it together where it needs to go and then glue it and tape it and let that stuff cure. And then you'll have a decent wing. For all my cowlings, I always um, sand them on a flat piece of paper on top of the board just so they're perfectly flat when I push them onto the model. So make sure that you just put a piece of sanding paper on the bottom of your board, tape it to the board, and then rub it on the thing lightly until you get a nice solid look. And once that's in, you're good to go. Uh, as you can see, here is all the tape work. I did not take the time to record that as it is very, very difficult and tedious. And here I am installing all the guns, which went pretty well. All I do with the guns is just put a little bit of clear glue on them so that I don't disrupt any of that clear glass because it is in good condition. And I did spend a lot of time um, taping and it was so brutal. It was so brutal. Just anybody who has done this kit, I commend you for it because man, that is so brutal. Uh, but definitely paint those guns before you stick those two halves together because they need to be painted. Uh, I did, I was just showing it as an example how this stuff went together. And that's one of the areas that could be sanded to make clear perfectly. So just be mindful of that. Surprisingly, the fit on all of these um, clear parts are, are really good. Uh, they fit together well, uh, you know, a little bit crooked sometimes you know a little bit off sometimes but that is that's just what you have to deal with with monogram now this goes in and be careful not to ruin your seam on the bottom if you've already seamed it together um, this definitely has a squeeze type fit and you actually slide it in and make sure that it clicks into that area same thing with the top gunner and the nose gunner so you just slide it in The canopy went on good as well. 
And now I'm going to micro mask. This is literally the best thing I've found in my whole entire kit for these little tiny stupid windows. So you just put on three or four coats, actually thin coats to cover up your rounded surfaces so you don't have to painfully tape these things. Best seven bucks I've ever bought online. It works especially good for these little bubble canopies um, just because it's a rounded surface and it's super hard to tape. I've, I've actually done it on a PV1. So, you know, you definitely want to use that. And this is the same chromate green I use for the interior. It's a custom mix and I just painted all the clear parts. I stuffed anywhere that could have paint go inside of the um, plastic parts with paper towel just so uh, the guns on the inside would not get ruined and the inside get painted. And here I painted the same chromate green on the outside of all the canopies and clear parts that would be seen on the inside. Then I coated with the final color with olive drab because uh, most of these models are olive drab. I went through about probably a whole pint of paint on this model <laughs> honestly <laughs> i mean i have a huge bottle of green vallejo primer and i probably used half of it on these things so yes you can follow me on all social media i'm on facebook group um join the group facebook Res resurrection modeler um you can join me there and i post all my videos on there so you won't miss a thing um but here i'm just painting the exterior your first coat of olive drab now i get into a lot of techniques here so stay tuned and we will get into these next techniques of how i weathered this so well after I primed it the color that the actual model should be, I actually went in afterwards and removed the paint from the panel lines that are receded. Now this is an important step because it allows more color to pop when you're really weathering your model. So um, this is a great step to do after you paint because it just reactivates those lines better as you can tell. I mean, you can barely see them right there, but once you scribe them, I mean, it's just a magical difference once you do it. So it's a high Highly recommended thing and this is a Tamiya scriber you can find online at any hobby shop I'm pretty sure and uh, you can find it on Amazon too super cheap it's like 15 bucks and you get blades with it um, just a necessary process in all your models to do so that those uh, elevators and ailerons and flaps and all those areas really get accented because those are movable parts and they would be separated from the airplane um, even further and it wouldn't make it look so uh, toyish once you do this process so it's a it's a good thing to do for all your models so here's the fun bit here enjoy riveting for the rest of the video Nah, I'm just kidding. There's no way I could have recorded 18 hours of riveting. No, it was not 15 hours. It was more like 20 hours. Um, this took an incredibly long time, especially when you're doing 2B24s. It's just crazy. Uh, but it's a necessary step, especially for a rare kit. You want to do it perfectly, and um, and that's why it, it seriously could win a competition. Uh, this is the best airplane I've ever built, and it's just super awesome. And here I am appreciating with my Posh airbrush. Um, one of the best. I mean, you can find parts super easily, and uh, there's nothing wrong with this airbrush whatsoever. But now I have a Grex, and it's a dream. <laughs> so, you know, when you have a Grex things change things are different your hands don't cramp up as much and you actually enjoy airbrushing because it just looks fancier and nicer but the posh airbrush is a classic and uh, if I actually had more tips and more needles for it I'd probably still use it honestly it's a good airbrush and if you clean it out properly like I failed to several times um, you know things go well here I am appreciating all those lines in the wings and this is a necessary process especially when you have raised panel lines on models. It just gives it that little extra oomph um, on recessed panel lines. You really don't have to do this step because you can just 
you know, use some thin, thinned paint later and whichever color you want. Uh, but for raised panel lines, this is really the only way I've found to really make those accent panel lines really pop. So I do this on the whole model uh, and I'm running about a 50-50 ratio on paint to water mixture with this black. And this is also a black Vallejo primer. And um, I've noticed if you mix too much water with it, it really it's like splatters and it's, I don't know, it's not my favorite color to paint with. But, uh, so just be mindful of the blacks. If you guys recommend any other blacks to me, I would be really grateful. Um, I've used some other blacks and they do the same thing. They kind of, if you mix them, like 50-50 water, they kind of spatter and just give you a really bad finish. So I'm looking for that really nice black that people use. And I don't, I want water-based. Uh, I know that the pigment's really heavy for black, so if I can't find it, then I'll just use what I've been using. It does work, but it's just not the best option, I feel like. So here is this big guy with all the pre-shaded lines and looking pretty cool. Super excited to get this bottom gray. And this is just a, I'm pretty sure your regular light gold gray or dark gold gray. Um, anything, anything will really work because you can just weather it perfectly, especially when you have you want to make it really rugged. So just stay away from your black lines, go in with your real, co real true color with some watered down paint, and then come back later with a white drop in it or a couple drops of white in it to brighten it up just a little bit and give that center of the panel line a little extra, little extra oomph and weather to it. It just looks nice. And then I do a very thin and light coat on top of what I had just done. And repeat this process until your whole model is painted. That's pretty much airbrushing in a nutshell. So on these wings, I actually used a tank rusting kit from Vallejo. And uh, this is just super legit. So what I did was some chipping methods to get this thing looking grimy, looking dirty, looking rusty, looking old. Um, I was kind of going for the lost in a graveyard type look for the B25. And if you found it in the graveyard, you could like fly it home. That's kind of the way I was picturing these B24s. Um, and so I just wanted it rusty and have that little bit of edge to it. I also custom, like, I didn't tape off the bottom because I wanted that faded look into the bottom gray just to be accented in this model. And I wanted it to kind of spruce through a little bit. But this is a chipping medium, so this is gonna bring those darker colors out. And you just spray it on your model just a little bit and um, wash it with water later after your next color. Uh, I applied this step to every single color I did. So I did that German brown now i'm doing rust and you just apply this step after step after step after step on those sim same areas and then later you go ahead and wash your medium off and then you're getting different colors and different chipping methods and different chipping effects um, bringing out different colors in the model and it really brings out an awesome rust tone so here i am just coating that next color and then i apply the chipping rust to that color and now i'm gonna put this orange orange rust color on and it's this, this is gonna brighten it up a little bit and make it more accented on this line here. Then I'm gonna apply another coat of chipping medium. You can see the chipping medium actually in those little riffles. That isn't water or too much buildup. That's actually the chipping medium underneath it. And you just repeat this process. I repeated it four or five times until the model kind of looked almost camouflage. And so here I am coating those areas again with cheap and medium, applying one more color. <laughs> I did this like six times so I'd get some awesome results. I was also making sure not to cover up the panel lines too much, but it kind of, I kind of did on accident. So, oh well. So then I painted my olive drab on top of it. Um, and this really made that color come out. And 
and I'm just filling in all those colors with the cheap and medium already on it and I have not removed it yet. Also not trying to cover up any of those orangish colors. I just find them that it did bring a lot to the model and it added a lot of character to the color of the model itself. It really did make it look more vintage. Here is the final product, and gosh, it just looks so sweet. It looks so rustic and rusted and cool. Best air airbrush job I think I've ever done, especially since I didn't go into the lines too much. So there you see, I did tape it, but I really wanted to leave that area not a sharp line. I wanted an airbrush line. So you can always go back and touch up your gray and make sure you have a nice airbrushed look line. Then I added some white to my olive drab and did a light coat on top of this. This is for the camouflage on the second B24. And you can also see there too, I added a little bit more white on certain panels and that really brings out some awesome exterior details as well. And this is just a super cool colored camouflage scheme. And all I did was just copy the, um, the instructions and just airbrush exactly where I needed to airbrush. It was, honestly, this is just nail biting the whole time. Um, my airbrush was not working right, as you could imagine. Um, and I literally could not figure it out. It took me so long to do this part, but it came out really good in the end. I love this camo camouflage scheme and um, I was impressed with my skills on this little area. And if something happened, I guess I did have olive drab and I could just paint that panel. Um, if something happens to you, that's what I would recommend is you just go back and maybe paint a panel with a different type of green just so it makes it look like Mm, that mistake did not happen. So I have in my airbrush at like a 60-40 ish ratio, but as you can see right here, something happens that just terrified me. <laughs> like, I don't know. I didn't mix the paint well enough, and I really recommend if you're going to do airbrush with no tape, no covering up of anything like make sure your airbrush is clean before you do it make sure you're dipping it make sure you're wiping off the nozzle um, make sure you're doing all the things necessary to keep your airbrush in well looking condition because literally my heart stopped when that happened um yeah <laughs> that was really scary my heart stopped just re-watching it a couple years later so um but yeah i'm just following the procedure here just doing all my airbrush lines just super carefully and uh making sure my paint's So another tip, um, if you're going to use an airbrush and do this, then you can put a lid on the airbrush. It's literally about to spill out at any moment. This thing is way too filled up, way too much, and it could literally spill all over the bottle. 
and I have literally had this happen a million times. Lend your airbrush, just do it for the sake of your own mind. Um, because you know it can happen. It can spill all over you or an auto or your bench or anything. Uh, and just terrible things can happen. I've had to happen to me and really pretty much every time of this because I don't learn from my mistakes sometimes. But so just go ahead, put the lid on it, and then you don't have to cringe at this stuff anymore. <laughs> Here we go with the chipping effect. All you do is just put some water on it and scrub it away with a brush. Be very cautious because this stuff does come up easier than you might think. It literally is designed to come up easily and you don't have to do any scraping. You just brush the area with water and it will come right up as you can see. One thing I would really rec recommend if you're doing this chipping medium is take a picture of your model so that you can see where you put the spots on where you put the chipping medium on. It is super important to do this step because I got to this point and I literally looked at my model and I went, huh, I wonder where I put the chipping medium. <laughs> and I was screwed like, oh crap. Um, but I put it in certain spots where I could remember later and it ended up working out fine. But definitely take a picture of your model, mark it out on your phone, and, um, and then you, can, you definitely know where your chipping stuff was. So one of my best tips is how to literally keep your water warm um, while you're doing your decals because literally it always cools down. Then you have to go add more water, then blah, 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 blah. I put my water on a candle warmer. So I have a little dish and I put it on a candle warmer so that the water stays warm and I can turn it off and control the heat so that I can heat it up a little bit more or cool it off a little bit less by shutting it off. Now this is a really, really, really hot tip. Um, no pun intended. Actually, it was intended. I scripted this, but it works really well. And especially when you get annoyed very easily like me, um, about your decals like cooling off and then you have to go refill your water, put it on a candle warmer. It works super well. You can, it doesn't heat it up and it doesn't melt the plastic. It doesn't melt your um, thing unless it's on for hours. It's just a super good way to keep your decals water warm so that uh, it slips off easily and doesn't curl up too much. Once the decals are on and slid off into the position that they need to be, roll out from the center to the edges to get out all the air bubbles and all the liquid from underneath the decal, just so that it's perfectly smooth to the surface. And I'm actually using a cotton swab to do that. Um, one of those is actually a modeler's cotton swab, so it's a little bit harder at the tip. Uh, and those are really good. Uh, once they get wet, they do end up deactivating a little bit and loosening up, but that's fine. And here I'm using some sand colored uh, wash. And this is a good effect if you want to kind of make it look more dirt, dirty, like dirt like dirty. Um, really good effect, especially for underneath the airplane. You can really get a nice dirt effect on it. This is an oil base so that it can go over a water based paint. And when you start washing it off, it won't wash off that water based paint. To accent these panel lines, I actually used an oil-based um, wash as well, just so that it highlights those areas that I scribed earlier, and it really makes it pop. 
really doesn't matter how much you put on here unless you're making a model look newer, uh, just so that it doesn't look too grimy. But you can always wipe this stuff off with uh, alcohol or paint thinner. To wipe it off, I always wipe it off with a paper towel first just to dry the model, um, kind of leave most of the paint that I had on there on just so I don't wipe too much off because you can wipe too much off and then it ruins your work and then uh, and you got to do it all over again. So I just use a dry paper, piece of paper towel to wipe off the main areas and then I go back with a brush with more thinner and just repeat the process until the model looks right. I apply the same method to the top of the model. So here I'm standing out an area so that I can put a foil on this part. I saw some reference photos where they actually had like polished aluminum underneath where the superchargers are. So I wanted to mimic that and it looks so good. So I use this micro metal foil adhesive and you apply it to the back of the aluminum foil with a brush or you can airbrush it on. I've tried both ways and both ways work the same. Um, but this time I brushed it on just to see how this would work and uh, and it worked pretty good So you just brush it on and make sure that it's a nice thin layer Definitely making sure that all that glue is is properly um, Pushed and moved to the sides so that dries nice and even then what I do is apply it to the model after it's dried for a couple hours put it on the model and then I just scrub it down with a cotton tip and just making sure to get all those curves and edges very carefully cutting around the seam where it needs to be cut and um, and yeah I mean this is probably the best effect I've ever had on any model it was super fun and I would recommend any newcomer to try this it's a lot easier than you might think and you just cut those panel lines out perfectly and that's what ends up making the model look great And as you can see here, as long as your X-Acto knife is pretty sharp, it cuts it pretty well, um, perfectly along those lines. So as I said, this is a great way to really give that your model a pop and make it look like it's the real deal. Now it's time to put the wings on this bad boy.
So if you made it through the video this far, thank you guys so much for watching. And we're gonna get into the pictures here in just a minute because these things just came out super well. And uh, if you have built this model, let me know in the comments. If you wanna build one, let me know and enjoy the photos. Thank you guys so much again for watching. Let's get back to building. Thank you. 